Hello everyone, my name is Oliver. Welcome to my channel. Before starting the video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a like up. During this one-of-a-kind event, Leblanc will appear opposite Matt de Rogatis, who will return as Brick in a condensed version of the play from the 2022 New York City production. Not only that, but if you attend the show, you'll be able to watch the players afterward as they participate in a discussion on bringing the Pulitzer Prize-winning drama to the off-Broadway stage. David Kaplan, the curator and co-founder of the Provincetown Tennessee Williams Theatre Festival, will host the event with the stars. LeBlanc uploaded a photo from his 2022 role with the caption, When you're sad, your bust is late, but somehow you know that things will be just fine. The actor's daytime counterparts lined up in. Today on The Young and the Restless, Abby confronts Tucker and demands him to leave her mother alone, Diane advises Jack to let Ashley face her demons on her own, and Devon assures Abby that he will not give his father another chance. As Victoria and her father sit in her car, watching her house burn, a firefighter approaches and says they can't be that near to the fire. That's my home, she exclaims. That house contains everything her children are familiar with and love. The firefighter claims there is nothing they can do. They can only keep it from spreading throughout the forests. Nikki and Claire at the ranch are impatiently awaiting news. She tells her grandmother that fire is Jordan's preferred weapon about Nadia from the hospital, and how she wanted to change her name to Athena like her favorite goddess. That made her cry a little bit, because it made her realize that she just wanted to be someone's favorite. Nikki tells her that it's an incredible gift to be able to speak to a child like that. When she's recovered, maybe she should consider work that involves children. This is the first time Claire has had the chance to imagine a future for herself. With children, she can still see the magic of the world through their eyes and give something back. But she has no training and a criminal record. Nikki urges her not to sell herself short and reminds her of what a great worker she was. She has a family who will vouch for her and tell anyone who asks how special she is. That makes Claire tear up. Nothing can happen until Jordan is locked up forever. Then her new life can start. Once Nikki has calmed down, Claire realizes she never actually saw her mom's house. Nikki says she still has what's important. They have each other, and they protect each other no matter what. Soon this will all be behind them. They discuss how much the doctors have been helping Claire, and she explains that she feels stronger thanks to the support of her new family. The fact that they have been able to welcome her in has been more than she could imagine. You are my granddaughter, and that's what matters most, Nikki says. Claire offers her more tea and Nikki thanks her for chatting. It was just what she needed. Once Victoria and Victor arrive, her mom hugs her, grateful that everyone is safe. Her daughter cries that everything is gone. Claire returns and embraces her mom, telling her how sorry she is. Victor declares they all know who is responsible. That woman is despicable. I want to tear her limb from limb. She deserves to rot in hell. Nikki bursts. Claire is sure that her aunt is desperate and lashing out wildly. Clearly, she has nothing else to lose which means she is more dangerous than ever, but also sloppy. Nikki thinks they should use the media to flush Jordan out. Victoria and her father think that will only spur more violence at this point. Instead, Victor wants to convince her to meet with him, sure she can't get the upper hand. Abby raps on the door of Tucker's suite at the athletic club. Once he answers, she barges in and demands to know what game he is playing with her mother. He says that things are over between them, but she thinks he's still messing with her head. Abby adds that her mom really loved him. Seeing something in him, no one else could, and he started playing games with her to punish her for leaving him. As she orders him to come clean, he asks what he supposedly did this time. Tucker admits that Ashley has been acting a little strange since she returned from Paris. At first, he thought maybe that was a game. Abby wonders if he did something her mom would want to punish him for. 
McCall points out she admitted that her version of their split in Paris was wrong. He's considered the possibility that she's trying to set him up, but he doesn't care and is moving on. As he packs his bag, Abby hopes he's doing everyone a favor and leaving for good. His being in town is just a constant reminder to Devon of what a disappointment of a father he is. Sitting down, he wonders what has prompted this outrage tonight. She informs him that her mother tried convincing Devon to forgive him. That makes him smile slightly in a bewildered way. After she recaps that conversation, he still doesn't know why she's there. Abby is worried that her mom has decided to forgive him. If that's true, it's urgent that he get away from her as well as Devon. Tucker takes this to suggest that she thinks Devon will forgive him eventually. She admits it, but she knows that all he does is hurt people. If McCall is serious about moving on, he needs to go. And if her mother is really planning some revenge play, she supports it. I hope she crushes you like a bug, she says, adding he will regret it if he pulls some sleazy move on her family. At the Abbott house, Ashley is pouring herself a drink when Jack strides in. He wonders what has her up so late. She claims that a dream woke her up. In it, she was with him and Tressie at the club. Although he was yelling, she couldn't hear him. Tucker popped up and started translating his words to her, so it all made sense. Jack doesn't like the sound of this. His sister explains that in the dream she wasn't herself, but someone else. They rehash the battle with Tucker. He thinks they need to find a way to get him out of her system for good. As much as he hates to ask, does she really want that? Sitting, she admits she doubts it. Part of her keeps thinking she should forgive him and give him another chance. Her brother hates the hold that man has on her and doesn't think he deserves forgiveness. She knows Jack spends a lot of time looking out for her, but she feels like she needs to handle this on her own. Ashley doesn't know what's going on with her. In her heart, she knows Tucker is the worst thing in the world for her. Jack urges her to let her siblings be there for her and help her past this. Reminding her of her psychologist friend in Paris, he urges her to call them. Once he walks off, she sits in the red chair and massages her temple as the voices echo in her head. They tell her this can't happen again. When Jack returns with some pie, he says he heard her talking. His sister claims she was leaving a voicemail with her friend and tells him he doesn't have to wait up with her. She turns down the pie, declaring she needs a walk to clear her head. After she steps out, Diane comes down the stairs and wonders why her husband is up. He explains his sister is in knots again. She suggests he let Ashley fight her demons on her own. Jack keeps worrying that this will be a repeat of his sister's previous about face with McCall that ended with her marrying him. His wife urges him again to let this go. He's not sure what to make of all of her constant shifts in character. Diane repeats it's time to let her work it out on her own, and Jack agrees to listen this time. He's noticed how supportive she has been and how far she's come with his sister. Putting her arms around him, she says she adores him and he deserves a peaceful household. As much as she loves how he looks after the people he cares about, she would love for things to get a bit better for everyone. When she is left alone at the ranch, Nikki stares at the alcohol and begins to shake again. She calls Jack to say she's having a rough time. He offers to come straight to her. Diane promises her husband she will wait up for him. After he walks off, she sighs. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe my Isa Media to our channel and stay with Tios.